डायनामिक्स अगेन वी डिवाइडेड इट टू किनेमेटिक्स एंड काइनेटिक्स और हमने पार्टिकल के लिए यही किया था लेकिन नाउ दैट वी आर लुकिंग एट अ रिजिड बॉडी वी आर आल्सो डूइंग द सेम थिंग फॉर इट बट देयर आर अ फ्यू थिंग्स व्हिच आर डिफरेंट फॉर अ रिजिड बॉडी एज कंपेयर्ड टू अ पार्टिकल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हमने किनेमेटिक्स में तो देखा ही था कि रोटेशन की वजह से देयर इज द होल देयर इज दिस होल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द रोटेटरी पार्ट ऑफ द मोशन व्हिच कम्स इन and then now also in kinetics we saw that the same thing happens which is ke this time around as well we have translation appearing as we are familiar but also there's a rotatory part of the equations of motion which pop in and we need those to correctly account for the entire general planar motion of the rigid body right so last time on monday we had talked in great depth about these three independent equations of motion so two of these are the um translational equations of motion or our familiar force in terms of mass and acceleration uh, but the special thing is that this time around we represent the resultant force acting on the rigid body in terms of the acceleration of the center of mass and this is quite key ke hum center of mass ki uh, ke motion ko use kar sakte hain to represent ke what will be the resultant force acting on the entire rigid body so it was of course for the x direction and for the y direction but then we have this third equation of motion coming in third equation of motion coming in which is the equation accounting for the rotational aspect of motion or in other words the equation accounting for the fact ke different points on the rigid body have different accelerations and this one basically is this that the resultant moment acting about g the center of mass must be equal to uh, ig times alpha take now we also discussed ke it is possible for us to actually take the moments about some other arbitrary point so for example ye thodi i know ye picture thodi si compress ho gayi hai please excuse that but if this is my my center of mass g what happens if i decide to actually take moments about this point p so in this case we discussed how what ends up happening is that we get that the summation of the moments about p must be equal to all inertial turning effects now inertial ya phir kinetic moments now what this mk representing is representing is basically this ig alpha because that is a turning effect but add on top of it the turning effect arising because of this magx and magy that is we also get this turning effect because of mag arising when we are taking moments about p ठीक है, so we talked about this in quite detail, and then we looked at the case when we only have translation, or of course translation means there is no alpha, so the moment equation or the equation of rotational motion becomes a bit more simplified about the moment about the center of mass uh, only though. So we we talked about this, and then we did a couple of examples for translation only. which i just want to recap a little bit because there was one small error that i want to i need to rectify basically last time um we had looked at this problem when we had a crate and we were discussing that we were assuming that it does not tip over but that's actually an assumption that we have to check theek hai ji so usi assumption ko check karne ke liye what we had done was that we had calculated the moment arm of where this normal reaction force acts from point g so we had calculated this distance x now last time some one of you guys had asked me a very good question ke uh, kya x would come up because i had taken it about o and the question was ke would x is come out to be can it be negative or not or at that moment i thought ki nahi because i was defining it about o and i just assumed ki it must lie within the rigid body but i checked again and i thought about it and that is not correct 
actually you the whoever was asking was completely right you can get an x which is either negative or it could be a larger value than this this dimension og or what that does or uh, ag sorry this half of the half of the width of the grid now what that means either of those is that something that is problematic in two ways so either though as i'm saying like okay, the x can be if this is our g there are two possibilities for our assumption to be shown to be wrong so our assumption would be wrong two ways wrong if for one ye jo mai x describe kar rahi thi ye if x turns out to be larger than 0.5 why because then x is lying somewhere here and that means ke the normal force is going to cause a uh it's not going to balance the counter it's not going to provide a balancing moment to cancel out uh, moments about g so ek to ye ho sakta hai ke when x is greater than zero but then the other one is definitely possible what the i think it was munzer munzer had brought up which is ke what happens if x is negative if x is negative then that is implying ke we are getting a moment arm for n such that it should be lying somewhere outside the body and notice of course that that is also not positive uh that is also not possible sorry not positive that's also not possible because the normal reaction force must of course lie within the region of contact of the crate and the ground so agar hame aisi koi moment arm mil raha hai normal reaction force ke liye ke wo to ji bahar honi chahiye then that also implies ke our normal reaction force is unable to provide ya phir there's it's just not hamari uh, Uh, situation is not physically possible so that also implies that there will be uh, tipping happening you tipping kya hoga toppling ya phir tipping <laughs> okay so i hope uh, that uh, uh, that clarifies ke okay yep actually it is possible uh, for us to get a value of x which may be negative but just pehle uh, i hadn't thought about it what it might mean physically but yes so it would mean ke we are getting that the normal reaction force must lie outside the crate and of course that is not physically possible so our assumption is wrong okay so could uh, please one of you uh, any any one of you confirm ke this does this make sense i did not mention this last time and i had gotten it wrong actually so i want to just correct this tala yes ma'am sahi hai theek hai samajh aa gaya okay so right so that's um, that's the example basically that we had looked at um and then we looked at one more example where ah uh, yes this mechanism ki example where we had managed to find the vertical reaction forces uh just not the horizontal ones okay right so today let's jump right in into our continuation for kinetics of a rigid body undergoing general planar motion um but as before when we looked at only rotation so ab let's look at only translation we looked at now let's look at only rotation and see again ke actually nothing surprising here it is the same old equations of motion what would be the last one summation of mg is equals to what guys wake up summation of mk ig alpha 
It's about Mg. So it's just Ig alpha. Okay, okay nothing complicated. In Tino go to Yad Kirkirakilena. Bulkuli. Pir Vojo Shore Vojo other wali, the other one, the one about M P. That one's sure. I'm I'm not saying Uske to it's just if you understand it's all the turning effects, then we can manage to write down what's here. But these guys we should all have on our fingertips. Like far far kar kya nahi jaye hume. Kyu? Hume f is equals to m a nahi aati far far kar ke. So is tarah we should also know this equation of rotational motion immediately. Okay. So uh, let's see. Uh, when we had translation only, the alpha was zero. But of course now when we have rotation only, that's not the case. Alpha exists, but let's just see okay, what happens to these equations. Now, note when I say that there is rotation only, what we mean is okay, our rigid body is rotating about a fixed axis passing through one point on it. So, for example, this rigid body, if it's rotating about point O, there is something that we can pull out from our knowledge of kinematics. Because we know that okay, when a body is undergoing rotatory motion, uski accelerations kya hoti hain at different points on the rigid body. So for example, we all know okay, the acceleration of the center of mass, which is the one that we're interested in. What would that be? Of course, AG uh, gets broken down. Uh, now, remember, if it's a uh, rotational motion, it's actually easier to represent it using normal and tangential components. So of course we all know ki AG tangential kya hota hai? AG tangential kya hota hai? Tangential direction ki acceleration which you recall is actually just alpha crossed with RG from O. Similarly what is AG N? We know that that is actually just minus omega squared RGO. So if we know these guys, here to our equations of motion, which we just written right here, become easy to write down in terms of the acceleration. The only thing is I had made a mistake. I had just been writing it in X and Y. But perhaps it's easier, as we just said, okay, for rotatory motion to look at it in tangential and normal components. Of course, the equation of motion is applicable no matter which coordinates we use. So x, y, ki jaga, agar hum nt use kar le, so long as they're perpendicular to each other, those coordinates are perpendicular to each other, we're all good to go. So that's why if I just replace my now, if I just replace my acceleration of the center of mass AGT and AGN with these expressions that we know from kinematics, so here we've got our equations of motion for only rotation. That is for the normal component, I know I've got my uh, m omega squared r. And for my tangential component, I've got my m alpha r. And the moment uh, equation or the equation of rotatory motion just stays as it is because alpha is, we know it's the same for the entire rigid body. So what your team Just note here though, okay, when I, when I start to write things down like this, I'm just converting everything into scalar equations, right? So I need to be a little bit careful about their directions because I have not made a coordinate system or anything to show what their directions are. So I personally then need to be careful. So for example, if I'm saying that this is RG in this direction and I know that omega and alpha are anti-clockwise, then I have to know that if alpha is in this direction, mein alpha is anti-clockwise, then the tangential direction will be this one. That is, I should know that AGT is in this direction. Mein. Whereas my normal force, I also know, must act 
towards the center of rotation so that is in this direction downwards so normal force is then this way so just the point is that when i write down these scalar equations i really need to be careful to remember that these forces have some directions so i do need to take those into account somehow either i draw in a coordinate system jo nt show kare directions ya phir i draw in these arrows to show the direction of the vector forces perfect there's something more that we can try here which is ke you remember ke we can write down this equation in terms of the moments about some other point so let me choose now this is important let me choose let me choose the center of rotation and now you guys help me out ke if i choose the center of rotation m o lu mai agar to phir ye jo ye i g alpha tha ye kya ban jata hai either what will i have on the right hand side what are all of the kinetic moments tell me please टर्निंग इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस एम ए जी एनीथिंग एल्स प्लस आई जी एल्फा प्लस आई जी एल्फा एग्जैक्टली डू नॉट फोरगेट के आई जी एल्फा दैट kinetic moment or kinetic couple appears as it is bilkul theek to yaad perfect now let's see ke mag of course because we written down the vector form ag ke do components hain there is a tangential component and a normal component so if i wanted to i could actually break this down this rg cross mag for the two components मतलब ये इसी को लेट्स सी के एक तो टेंजेंशियल कंपोनेंट हो गया एक नॉर्मल कंपोनेंट हो गया तो पहले अलग अलग कर लेते हैं ए जी टी का तो क्लियरली वी कैन सी आई होप वी कैन ऑल स्पॉट कि द टर्निंग इफेक्ट ऑफ द टेंजेंशियल कंपोनेंट इज जस्ट गोइंग टू बी द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस व्हिच इज आर जी और मल्टीप्लाइड बाय एम ए जी टी परफेक्ट but what about this normal component uska kya rg hoga it will be zero it will be zero exactly right because it is passing through our center of rotation that is agar main moments about o le rahi hu to this ag n ka turning effect disappears so i only have rg m a g t plus ig alpha and now comes the nice neat little part ke please uh, notice ke uh, agt jo hai the tangential acceleration is also can also be written in terms of alpha so let's just simplify this further this becomes rg m alpha r plus ig alpha how about i take these alphas out as a common so that becomes then oh ye bhi ye r bhi to rg hai so this becomes m rg squared plus ig multiplied by alpha now can someone identify that this thing in the bracket is also another term that we know of what is this parallel parallel axis theorem bilkul theek thank you uh, on point today so this is exactly the parallel axis theorem which is telling us what the moment of inertia is about o how come 
ये देखिए ना आईजी वैसा का वैसा आ गया कि व्हाट इज द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया अबाउट द सेंटर ऑफ मास एंड देन वी शिफ्ट द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया अबाउट ओ बाय जस्ट एडिंग टू आईजी द मास मल्टीप्लाइड बाय दिस परपें दिस डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द टू पैरेलल एक्सिस स्क्वायर्ड सो मास टाइम्स आर जी स्क्वायर्ड सो दिस इज इन फैक्ट एक्चुअली आई ओ so to put it mildly or I know I'm sorry मैं यूं 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 जा रही थी तो इसको जरा सीधी तरह लिख लेते हैं that if I take moments about O they actually simplify to I O alpha for this case when we have rotation only because in that instance we only have the tangential acceleration which causes a uh, kinetic moment and the normal acceleration just passes through the center of rotation theek now let me just uh, point out ke uski wajah se hum actually apni equations of motion ko ek aur form mein jo likh rahe the which is moments about some other point the moments about some other point also becomes a simplified little expression like and as i said please be careful this is not generally applicable we are looking at the case of rotation only okay it's only for the case of rotation that are there is just a tangential and normal acceleration of the center of mass theek hai agar general planar motion hoga to ye agt aur agn nahi honge hamare paas ठीक सेकेंडली ओनली फॉर द केस ऑफ रोटेशन इज के द नॉर्मल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द एक्सेलरेशन पास थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ रोटेशन सो उसके अलावा ये चीज एप्लीकेबल है ही नहीं उसके अलावा दिस इक्वेजन राइट हियर इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल और अगर इफ इट वॉज जनरल प्लेनर मोशन देन वी वुड हैड आर फेमिलियर ये एम के जो था द काइनेटिक मोमेंट अबाउट ओ मतलब वो जनरल वाला ही वैसा का वैसा रहता इट्स ओनली इन दिस केस के दिस एम के सिंप्लीफाइज टू आई ओ अल्फा ठीक सो सो यप सो व्हाट वी डन इज जस्ट एज बिफोर फॉर ट्रांसलेशन कि हमने वही इक्वेशंस ऑफ मोशन लिए हैं और उनको रोटेशन के केस में सिंप्लीफाई कर दिया है नाउ एज वी सेड के जस्ट the procedure always involves in establishing the coordinate system first now for rotational motion it's helpful to have normal and tangential although not necessary kabhi kabhi we can still get away with using the x and y components as well it's up to us depending on the problem then similarly to what we've done before the procedure the rest of it is exactly the same we draw the free body diagram we draw the kinetic diagram to help us uh, then apply the equations of motion the three equations of motion right so that's it and let's uh, now consider an example to uh, just reinforce what we've just seen so consider here that we have a rod with mass of 20 kg which is rotating at 5 radians per second as shown a moment of 60 newton meter is applied to the rod and what we want to do we want to find the angular acceleration alpha theek hai ji and the reactions at pin o okay reactions at o when the rod is in the horizontal position matlab jab wo aise hai theek hai ji so let's start this problem as always so because it's in the horizontal direction it may be helpful for me to just stick to my x y coordinates if you guys don't mind kyunki wo x y jo hai wo coincide kar jayenge normal or tangential so for example normal or tangential agar main draw karu so they would have been oh, they would have been normal and tangential like this aur wo directions coincide kar rahi hain x y se even though they're flipped around so x corresponds to minus n and y corresponds to minus t so uh, i'll just stick to using my x y okay hmm next as always our step is always to draw the free body diagram 
where I want to isolate my rigid body. Um, and then I've drawn in the axis. Now I apply the, put in the applied forces. And then the support reactions. Or am I missing anything else here? So the support reactions I've called OX and OY. Guys, uh, is that it for the free body diagram, everyone? Momentums, we are going Momentums, exactly. Oh, sorry, <laughs> moments. Moments, right? sorry. Moments, yes. So, moment B draw karni hai. And yesterday, oh my God, I made this mistake with the 11C. Or I made this class ko kar diya tha because I solved this entire problem forgetting that there is this 60 Newton meter. Just because of this small silly mistake, ki I missed out drawing on the free body diagram that we need to draw in all the applied forces and moments. So this has to be in here. Cannot forget, please. So this Okay. So thank you for pointing that out. All the forces and moments acting on our rigid body or couples, forces and couples. Okay, perfect. Then we can draw our kinetic diagram. Or for that one, that's a bit more straightforward. Luckily for us, we know it's just the X, M, it's MAG, the acceleration of the center of mass. But I just want to notice that it will happen. Men, men, I'm I know I draw in all of them. I draw in MAGX or, or uh, uh, MAGY and IG alpha. But this time around, I also I already want to cut out some information. And I want to point out to you guys that there is a. I forgot to mention. So I should probably draw in an alpha key direction. That's the thing that I'm waiting for. So because omega is anti-clockwise and sorry, omega is clockwise and I can see that it's 60 Newton meter clockwise. But I, I told you guys that I like to stick to my positive sign conventions so that we have a minus sign that it's acting opposite to the drawn in convention. So, when I'm assuming what alpha is, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take alpha to be as a vector to be a positive one in the k direction. I'm going to take it to be alpha is equals to alpha k. Matlab ye ke jab main ig alpha draw karu, that would be this one. Even though mujhe pata hai, I know guys, I can see ke omega jo hai, Wo as a vector is actually minus 5k because it's clockwise. But for alpha, I personally want to keep it as a positive. Or if it comes negative, I will know that it was clockwise. Tha. <coughs> so for now, my alpha is anti-clockwise like so. Just a personal preference. Okay, now, now that I have assumed my direction for alpha ke wo clockwise hai, then let's also think about the directions of uh, each of the uh, uh, each of the normal and tangential accelerations. So if I have my AG, uh, the center of mass right here, of course, because of Omega, it's going to have an acceleration inwards like so, which is agar ye samjhe, kinetic diagram, which would be equal to omega squared r. But also because of my alpha, which I'm assuming is in this direction, it's going to have a 
نارمل ایکسلریشن لائک سو بٹ اٹس ٹینجینشیل ایکسلریشن وڈ بی یہ مجھے ادھر نہیں بنانا جیسا ڈرون اٹ ہیئر اف اٹس روٹیٹنگ لائک دس الفا دین دیٹ از گوئنگ ٹو کاز این اپ ورڈس ٹینجینشیل ایکسلریشن فار دا سینٹر آف میس going to cause an acceleration like so alpha r right agar wo is rotating rotating about o so alpha is like this so alpha multiplied by r is going to be upwards the tangential acceleration is that clear to everybody yes ma'am theek thank you Okay, so that's uh, with those two guys in, I can then draw in Kimeria. This will become M alpha R and this one will become M omega squared R to the left. Perfect. So now with all of that, I can start to solve it. So we know our um, uh, each of our equations of motion. So summation Fx is going to be equal to M A G X. So let's substitute things in here. What do we get for OX minus seven hundred and fifty newtons? So OX to see that from one equation away. The next one then is going to be my summation f y is equals to m a g y and lastly summation m g is equals to i g alpha So moments about G, MG passes through it, OX passes through it. So there's just OY, which is causing a clockwise moment. So minus OY times 1.5, just this one, minus seven, it's causing a clockwise. Or the 60 Newton meter to here he, That's also clockwise. So that's minus 60 uh, is going to be equal to Ig alpha. I forgot to calculate what Ig is. For a rod, we know it is about the center of mass. It is ml squared divided by 12. So in this case, it would be m3 squared divided by 12 times alpha. Now clearly these are two equations with OY and alpha as the unknown. So we just have to solve them. Hmm, not so, but they're not so nice actually, like in Jale, I'll try. Hmm.
क्लास आप लोगों का अल्फा क्या आ रहा है एनी वन हुज मैनेज टू सॉल्व दिस कहाँ गए सब लोग मैं अभी कार्ड है ओके कीप क्वाइट माइनस टेन पॉइंट एट अल्फा यस मैम चले जी सो वी हैव थ्री डिफरेंट आंसर्स तला एंड वन मोर पर्सन एंड माय सेल्फ मेरे ये आ रहे हैं लेकिन Okay so the correct answers are these ones 5.9 and 19 Ah okay so hmm tala <clears throat> tala there's been a mistake in your one क्लास एनी बडी हुज मैनेज टू गेट द राइट वन या फिर क्या मेडिसमेटिक में भी कहाँ गए सब लोग कोई कैलकुलेशन में मसला होगा फिर यही सही होगा यस तो लेकिन क्या हुआ है बाकी क्लास कर ही नहीं रही ठीक है ठीक है स्टूडेंट्स ठीक है समझ आ गई मुझे ऐसा ना करें प्लीज आप लोग साथ साथ सॉल्व करते जाया करें वरना यू वॉन्ट इंजॉय इट इज मच ऑल द फन इज इन द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग in my opinion to solve a, a puzzle you know chale um it seems ke so it's essentially i don't think ke any of us would have gotten the conceptual part wrong so the only possibility is ke we might have made a mistake perhaps in the direction of the accelerations of the center of mass so ye kuch Uh, the the deal with these type of questions is that they're a bit long winded so we just need to be careful and consistent throughout them so ab jaise if i have assumed a positive alpha matlab maine anti clockwise alpha assume kiya hai to i have to usi alpha ke hisab se i have to then draw in my direction of the accelerations of the center of mass so because maine alpha ko is direction mein liya tha 
So then I have to take it that my m alpha r must be upwards, and my m omega squared r, that was of course towards the center of rotation he on that. So that goes in that direction. And then with that uh, consistent signs or arrows drawn in, then I can move to drawing, uh, to writing out and solving my equations of motion. So my x, well, he. उसको हमने सॉल्व किया तो डायरेक्टली ओ एक्स आ गया एज ए नेगेटिव दैट मीन्स के इट वॉज नॉट एक्टिंग टू द राइट एज आई ड्रॉन बट टू द लेफ्ट एंड एफ वाई उसके लिए फ्रॉम दैट वी गेट वन इक्वेजन एंड देन एम जी वाली इक्वेजन विच वॉज द वन मोर डिफिकल्ट टू बी केयरफुल ऑफ विद द साइंस सो फॉर माई साइन कन्वेंशन आई कैन सी इफ आई एम टेकिंग मोमेंट्स अबाउट द सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी राइट हीयर दिस वन जी सेंटर ऑफ मैथ सॉरी then oy is causing a clockwise moment so that's a negative and then this 60 newton meter to clockwise hai wo to act jahan pe bhi kare when couples are applied they act all over the body uh, with the same direction so it's the 60 newton meter in the minus direction and that's this going to be equal to ig alpha and then solving those two simultaneous equations together i get this solution Now note ke when I'm getting an alpha as a minus, उससे मुझे पता चल रहा है कि it would have been it it's actually clockwise from the negative answer. Perfect. Okay, so let's. Uh, I think uh, that was the only example I had in here for rotation. So let me just spend a few minutes uh, further before giving you guys a little break before your quiz. So the quiz will be at ten a.m. as always. um so abhi we've still got 15 minutes so let's carry on for a little bit longer so now we've looked at just translation we've looked looked at just rotation and now we're moving to general planar motion the case where we just don't have any specific information about alpha or ag which is why our standard general equations of motion come into play मतलब ये कि ट्रांसलेशन ओनली में तो हमारे पास अल्फा था ना हमें पता था वो जीरो है तो वो खत्म हो गया था वेर इज अभी रोटेशन ओनली में वी हैड इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ द सेंटर ऑफ मैथ बट दिस टाइम अराउंड वी डोंट हैव एनी ऑफ दैट एंड ऑल वी एंड वी कैन डू इज जस्ट स्टिक टू आर सिंपल जनरल इक्वेजन ऑफ रोटेशनल एंड ट्रांसलेशनल मोशन जिस यूज दैम of course we have already seen if we take moments about some other point p jo ke is maybe somewhere like this then we get the kinetic moment jo pehle you guys have told me what that consists of it's ig alpha plus rg with respect to p crossed with mag okay so do remember this as well because sometimes it can be useful to apply moments about some other point क्योंकि मे बी उसके थ्रू ज्यादा फोर्सेस पास कर रही हूँ एंड व्हाट नॉट ओके सो जस्ट अ लिटिल रिकैप आ नो नॉट जस्ट अ लिटिल रिकैप देयर इज वन मोर यप वन मोर इंटरेस्टिंग एस्पेक्ट व्हिच आई विल डिस्कस क्विकली राइट नाउ एंड देन वी विल कम बैक आफ्टर द क्विज एंड डिस्कस इन इवन मोर डेप्थ व्हिच इज के आई नाउ वांट टू गो बैक एंड रिकैप दैट रोलिंग प्रॉब्लम दैट वी हैड बीन कंसीडरिंग इन किनेमैटिक्स इन सच ग्रेट डेप्थ so you remember that we were looking at a wheel ya a any sort of cylindrical ya circular thing which was rotating about a <clears throat> on a surface so it was moving on a fixed ground let's say now when we were doing kinematics ya kinematics however you want to call it hum logo ne assume kiya tha ke it was under the condition of no slip मतलब ये कि दिस पॉइंट व्हिच वाज इन कांटेक्ट विद द ग्राउंड एक्चुअली हैड अ वेलोसिटी ऑफ जीरो और इसीलिए तो वो हमारा क्या इट वाज एक्टिंग लाइक आर इंस्टेंटेनियस सेंटर ऑफ रोटेशन यू रिमेंबर नाउ द थिंग इज द रीजन व्हाई वी वर डूइंग दिस वाज बिकॉज़ अगर हम ये अजम्पशन ना करते ना तो खाली केनेमैटिक से हम और कोई एनालिसिस इसका कर ही नहीं सकते थे whereas now that we are looking at forces we are looking at kinetics we are looking at the cause of motion we are actually able to figure out whether ye slip karta hai ya nahi 
मतलब ये कि अगर वो जो व्हील रोल कर रहा था डज इट हैव जीरो वेलोसिटी और डज इट एक्चुअली स्किड ओवर इट मतलब जिस तरह गाड़ी का व्हील के साथ कभी कभी होता है समटाइम्स इट इज गोइंग नाइस एंड स्मूथली दैट मींस इट जस्ट रोल्स ओवर एंड आवर कार ट्रैवल्स क्वाइट क्वाइटली बट अदर टाइम्स वी आर एक्चुअली स्किडिंग एंड द व्हील इज रोलिंग बट इट्स नॉट मूविंग फॉरवर्ड एंड दैट्स व्हेन देयर इज स्लिप हैपनिंग हियर so with uh, the in kinematics this was the only thing that we looked at no slip theek hai ji but now for kinetics hum actually isko check kar sakte hain aur hum figure out kar sakte hain for a particular problem whether there is slipping or there is no uh, sorry you will talk about whether there is no slipping or whether there is slipping theek okay? let me just show you uh, just introduce to you guys how that is possible so first of all let me look at my problem of a jo uh, wheel ya yeah, disc which is uh, rolling theek okay? hai i don't know if it's with slip or without slip now if i apply my equations of motion to it theek okay? pehle to we na hum apna free body diagram draw kar lete hain so there is an applied force p ye ye applied force hai this applied force p then there's the normal reaction force the friction force and the weight so if i apply my equations of motion i get in my x direction i just have p minus f p minus f is equals to the acceleration of the center of mass wo to because that slip ho ya no slip ho if it has an acceleration that would be in the horizontal direction हम कोई उसके अप एंड डाउन जंपिंग या बाउंसिंग के बारे में बात नहीं कर रहे इट्स इज रोलिंग सो दैट्स व्हाई देयर इज जस्ट एम ए जी राइट हियर बट इन द वाई डायरेक्शन एज आई जस्ट सेड देयर इज नो एक्सेलरेशन सो उसकी तो देयर इज एन इज इक्वल्स टू एम जी आ गई इक्वेशन बट लास्टली देन वी हैव द मोमेंट इक्वेशन व्हिच एम जी इज इक्वल्स टू आई जी अल्फा now the only force that has a turning effect about g is the force is the frictional force baki the weight is passing through it p is passing through it and n is also passing through it so this equum the equation becomes fr is equals to ig alpha now the thing is if we look at this equation these equations we see that there are abhi humne kaha na ki hame nahi pata ki wo slip kar raha hai ya nahi kar raha aur what that means is ke we don't know ke friction ki kya value hai so for example and now listen very carefully if it is slipping agar wo idhar se aapas mein relative motion ho raha hai and there is skidding or slipping happening here then we know ke there is relative motion and we know ke friction then must be the kinetic friction ठीक बट इफ देर इज नो स्लिपिंग वो सिर्फ ये काइनेटिक वाला केस में इट्स रोलिंग विदाउट स्लिपिंग देन वी डोंट नो के वो फ्रिक्शन की क्या वैल्यू हैज फ्रिक्शन रीच इट्स मैक्सिमम या फ्रिक्शन बहुत लो है क्या है हमें उसमें उस केस में फ्रिक्शन नहीं पता सो माय पॉइंट इज व्हेन वी डोंट येट नो के स्लिपिंग और स्लाइडिंग वी डोंट नो के वॉट द फ्रिक्शन इज एंड द फ्रिक्शन इज एक्चुअली एन अनोन इन दैट केस Okay, so in addition to friction, when I look at these equations, there are more unknowns as well. My acceleration of the center of mass is an unknown. I don't know what it is. My normal reaction force is an unknown. Although if I just solve this one equation, मुझे वो पता चल जाएगी. लेकिन just ignore कि अभी हम solve नहीं कर रहे. So it's an unknown. And then lastly, in my third equation, my alpha is another unknown in there. Friction भी है और alpha भी है. my point of saying all of this is that i have three equations and i have four unknowns and i think you guys all know ke agar hamare paas four unknowns hain to unko solve karne ke liye i need four equations okay if anybody wants to argue ke nahi ye n ka to pata hai to sure theek hai ha n to hame pata chal gayi is equation se so theek hai let's just cut that equation out even then we end up with three unknowns just with these two equations the point is just 
कि वी हैव वन इक्वेशन मिसिंग एंड वी नीड वन मोर एक्स्ट्रा पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन and how do we get that extra piece of information is by with this when i was discussing ke whether it slips or does not slip we have to make an assumption about it to begin with just the way abhi humne wo crate wali example mein jo tipping ki assumption ki thi na that these sort of assumptions they give us an extra bit of information and then uh, allows us to solve the problem but then we have to check ya test that same assumption again so in this case may for these uh, rolling problems we have to make an assumption as i said about the nature of the contact whether that is a slip or a non slip condition at the point of contact so consider ke wo do assumptions kya ho sakti hain so the simpler assumption to make is ke there is no slip the one that we considered in kinematics aur jab no slip thi idhar then humne kinematics mein already dekha tha ke this point acts as the zero velocity the zero velocity hoti kyunki wo slip nahi kar raha hota aur uski wajah se we can then analyze it and we know ke the acceleration of the center of mass is given by this ag is equals to alpha r because it's as if that the body is rotating about uh, center iske about rotate kar raha hota hai to humne usko uski hi relative acceleration or relative velocity ka analysis karke ye find kiya tha kinematics mein so this equation then becomes our fourth equation it gives us the extra piece of information and we can solve it lekin one key aspect right here is as i've just tried to explain to you guys is ki if it is not slipping ye kinematics wala case jo hai when there is zero velocity right there then all we know is ki acceleration uh, ke friction ne apni maximum value ko exceed nahi kiya that is we know the only thing we know is कि जो फ्रिक्शन आएगी दैट शुड बी इट मस्ट बी लेस देन इट्स मैक्सिमम केस ओनली देन ही ये नो स्लिप पे रहेगा ना क्योंकि फ्रिक्शन ने इधर बैलेंस किया हुआ था जो भी फोर्स थी कोई और राइट वेर एज इफ द फ्रिक्शन एक्सीड्स दिस स्टैटिक केस तो फिर दैट मींस के दैट्स जस्ट नॉट पॉसिबल फिर तो दैट मींस के वहां पे स्लाइडिंग होनी शुरू हो गई होगी सो द थिंग इज वी कैन एज्यूम दिस नो स्लिपिंग एंड देन हैव आवर एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ द सेंटर ऑफ मास इज आवर फोर्थ इक्वेशन एंड देन यू विल हैव टू टेस्ट दिस एजम्पशन बाय चेकिंग के वाकई क्या हमारी फ्रिक्शन कम्स आउट टू बी लेस देन द मैक्सिमम स्टैटिक फ्रिक्शन इफ इट डज नॉट फिर दिस एजम्पशन वाज रॉन्ग एंड दैट मींस कि वी हैव टू गो टू द सेकंड केस which is ke nope there is slipping happening at this point aur agar slip ho raha hai to phir to hamara kaam aasan ho gaya because we then know ke friction has reached its wo maximum exceed ho ke ab motion hone shuru ho gaya hai aur friction must be equal to its uh, kinetic value kinetic friction ka case theek aur is case mein please note this is extremely important ki if there is slip ye case 2 jo hai this is not something that we have looked at previously in kinematics so is case mein there is wo acceleration jo hai that's an unknown that's not directly equal to alpha r theek hai because wo jo ag is equal to alpha r tha that was only the case for our kinematics one this one when we had assumed ke there koi slip nahi hai and there is zero velocity okay guys so this is something very interesting and new for us because now with the added bit of information from kinetics we are able to figure out whether something some rolling problems are actually skidding or not or they're slipping or not and so on so we'll do some examples for this uh, after we come back from the quiz but about half an hour left for just 
a few examples of uh, general planar motion right so abhi just uh, before the quiz uh, we had been discussing okay now with information provided to us by kinetics we are actually in a position to determine whether ye rolling wali problems mein slip hota hai ya nahi ठीक एंड वी वर बेसिकली डिस्कसिंग हमें एक एक्स्ट्रा पीस ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन चाहिए होती है बिकॉज इक्वेजन ऑफ मोशन से हमारे पास तीन इक्वेजन आ रही हैं बट वी हैव फोर अन नोन एंड दैट एक्स्ट्रा पीस ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन कम्स वन वी मेक दिन दैट इनिशियली कि देर इज नो स्लिप एंड वन वी एज्यूम दैट देर इज नो स्लिप फिर हमारे पास हमारा वही किनेमेटिक्स वाला रिजल्ट आ जाता है फॉर देंटर फॉर द एक्सेलरेशन और देंटर ऑफ मैथ एंड वी कैन यूज दैट टू फिगर आउट के ओके uh to solve the problem and in the end to check the validity of the frictional friction being less than the maximum value but then if this does not hold true matlab humne check kiya aur pata chalta hai ki nahi actually hamari assumption galat thi then we have to go to case 2 that is then we have to solve the entire problem again uh and this time knowing ke um there will be slipping so ab let's just Uh, see some examples to see if we've got this all covered just to summarize the procedure we we've, we've done this many times now so uh, of course the inertial coordinate system uh draw in basically in my opinion the free body diagram and the kinetic di- kinetic diagram um exactly so yeah it's free body diagram kinetic diagram and then we apply the equations of motion be careful here ke फ्रिक्शन की डायरेक्शन जो होती है ना दैट वन हैज टू बी केयरफुली ड्रॉन इन आई डिस्कस दैट इन जस्ट अ सेकेंड ऑल्सो यस एज वी सीन फॉर जनरल प्लेनर मोशन फॉर रोलिंग मोशन इन पर्टिकुलर वी विल नीड एजम्पन ऑफ नो स्लिप फर्स्ट ठीक है जी टिपिकली वी एज्यूम नो स्लिप एज आई सेड हियर um so that we can use this acceleration for the center of mass to solve it and then we check for our validity of the assumption theek hai perfect so uh yep ye bhi i discussed this before ke be careful ke when we are using when we are applying our equations of motion often we are just applying them in scalar form ye jo hum equation three equations of motion laga rahe hain उनको हम स्केलर फॉर्म में करें सो वी डू नीड टू कीप अ ट्रैक के वॉट आर द डायरेक्शन ऑफ दोज फोर्सेज एंड दोज मोमेंट्स एंड दोज एक्सेलरेशन एंड सो ऑन लास्टली उसी तरह फ्रिक्शन की डायरेक्शन इज ऑलवेज अ ट्रिकी वन टू कैलकुलेट और ये दिस वन बी आई थिंक ए इट कम्स विद प्रैक्टिस और बी अभी हम एग्जाम्पल्स करते हैं तो विल विल सी अबाउट दैट ओके so let's uh, jump to looking at an example so here we have a spool which has a mass of 8 kg and a radius of gyration of this uh, the cords have negligible mass trapped around its inner hub inner hub and outer rim there is no slipping theek hai ji what we want to do we want to find the angular acceleration of the spool right so this spool thing is basically जो स्पूल होता है ना दैट्स जस्ट ए इट्स अ राउंड कंपोनेंट अराउंड व्हिच सम थ्रेड इज नॉर्मली रैप्ड ये स्पूल होती स्पूल बस ये चीज होती है एक ऐसा सा व्हील इसमें कोई हब्स शब्स बने हो जिसके इर्द गिर्द हम कोई थ्रेड को रैप कर रहे हो ठीक है कल मैं मिसाल दे रही थी कि धागा जो होता है एक नॉर्मल सिलाई का धागा दैट दैट काली सी उसको चीज को क्या कहते हैं उर्दू में मैं भूल गई वो वो स्पूल होता है जिस पर धागा बंधा होता है ठीक और किसी ने मुझे कहा कि मैम सिलाई छोड़ें पतंग का जो वो दैट्स ऑल्सो द द वन जिस पे आपने डोर बांधी होती है दैट्स अ स्पूल ठीक द थिंग दैट्स रोटेटिंग एज जब आपकी पतंग होती इन एनी केस इट्स जस्ट दिस सिंपल थिंग अराउंड व्हिच अ थ्रेड इज रैप्ड अराउंड एंड दैट्स नोन एज अ स्पूल ओके सो व्हाट्स हैपनिंग टू दिस स्पूल इज के वी आर पुलिंग ऑन द थ्रेड ऑन दिस पार्ट व्हिच ऑफ कोर्स इज गोइंग टू cause it as you can imagine it's going to if the force is large enough uh then it may cause it to move or rotate or either it's given without slipping no slipping it would rotate upwards or downwards 
ठीक है तो या तो उसकी अप्लाइड फोर्स की वजह से वो ऊपर की तरफ रोल करेगा या फिर बिकॉज ऑफ द वेट पर थोड़ा सा ना तेज तेज करने के लिए साथ साथ स्लाइड के साथ कर लेते हैं ठीक है जी सो फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम की हमने काफी प्रैक्टिस की है सो फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम राइट हियर इज ऑफकोर्स गोइंट बी जस्ट the 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 spool which has been separate isolated from the system then it has a tension acting on it because of the thread on the right hand side an applied force of 100 newtons because that was already given and a weight acting downwards aur iske upar koi na force thi na moment thi so that's it then let's draw the kinetic diagram ye meri kinetic diagram draw hui hai that one for that one we it's just the center of mass that we have to identify right so main keh rahi thi ke aisa karte hain let me assume ke ye 100 newton force zyada large hai and it's going to cause it to roll upwards so let me just assume that the acceleration is in the positive directions as i as i like to do so this would be mag or of course to get this acceleration it must have been having an alpha like so So, ये एक नेगेटिव uh, हो गया कि अल्फा मेरी नेगेटिव हो गई है बट एनी वे सो आई जी अल्फा इन दिस डायरेक्शन एंड नोट के आई आई एम अज्यूमिंग बेसिकली वो दैट नो स्लिपिंग कंडीशन इवन दो ये ना थोड़ी आई थिंक दिस इज अ बिट एम्बिक्यूस तो क्वेश्चन शुड बी मोर क्लियर दैट देर इज नो स्लिपिंग एज इट रोल्स अबाउट पॉइंट ए ठीक है जी सो मतलब ये कि इट दिस इज इट्स पॉइंट ऑफ कांटेक्ट अबाउट व्हिच या फिर इट इज इट्स सेंटर ऑफ रोटेशन फॉर द स्पूल एज इट रोल्स अपवर्ड्स और डाउनवर्ड्स इट्स अबाउट दिस पॉइंट इट्स दिस इंस्टेंटेनियस सेंटर ऑफ जीरो वेलोसिटी या इंस्टेंटेनियस सेंटर ऑफ रोटेशन ओके सो दैट्स व्हाई आई हैव ओनली ड्रॉन इन द वर्टिकल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द एक्सेलरेशन और उसी को मैंने ए जी कह दिया है बिकॉज देर इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी देर इज इन गोइंग टू बी एनी एक्सेलरेशन इन दस डायरेक्शन ठीक है सो विद दिस कैनेटिक डायग्राम जिसको और ज्यादा कॉम्पैक्टली करके यहाँ पे बनी हुई है दैट ए जी इज अपर्ड एंड एल्फा इज क्लॉक वाइज सो लेट्स अप्लाई आर इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन आई येस ऑल्सो फर्स्ट लेट्स कैलकुलेट आई जी आई फॉर्ट टू डू दैट if you already know that the radius of gyration is this one so ig we know is actually m times kg squared so that's pretty straightforward ye ye this is from the definition of the radius of gyration and it is 8 times 0.35 squared just solving this directly we get that i turns out to be this value right here now applying the equations of motion we have the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be just mag y to kya hai wo it's tension plus 100 minus the weight is equals to mag perfect and the second equation of motion which is applicable here because wo x direction mein to there is no force so that's just trivial na force hai isliye there is no acceleration but for the moment equation we've got mg is equals to ig alpha so remember moments about g so weight to uske through guzar gaya wo kya gaya bacha kya piche it's just the 100 newton force and the tension which are going to cause turning effects and they are going to be then equal to the net moment is going to be equal to ig alpha right here now see the problem right here is if you notice that we have three unknowns in these two equations or that's why we need that assumption jo question mein provided hai of no slipping about point a because then that tells us ke iske about ye cheez rotate kar rahi thi and humne apne kinematic analysis se we already know then ke ag must be equal to alpha times r where this r is is 0.5 okay 
ठीक है और इससे हमारे पास वो थर्ड इक्वेशन आ जाती है विच अलाउज अस देन टू सॉल्व फॉर दीस थ्री अननोन्स तो यूजिंग दीस थ्री साइमल्टेनियस इक्वेशंस we can solve them together to find out that the alpha is this ag is this and tension turns out to be this one right here theek so you see how that for rolling motion this this thing this point of contact aur uske jo characteristic hai that's the one that is key that provides the key information for us right um one important thing here is ke uh, ye men i've written it out as method 1 just to point out also ke we are not limited to calculating moments just about g agar hum if we wanted for example we could have kyunki abhi dekhe na mujhe ye do equations mili hui hain aur mujhe idhar kya nazar aa raha hai uh, uh, ke in do equations mein the tension is the uh, sort of trailing unknown that's popping up what if instead ke i take the moment equation about some point such as a taaki ye tension gayab ho jaye phir uska kya fayda hota uska ye fayda hota ki meri jo ye <coughs> equation moments about a wali equation hai uske andar unknown sirf alpha aur g ag hote to then together with my ag is equals to alpha r main ye directly in do equations ko pehle solve kar sakti thi to find my um to find these two unknowns directly or phir i can then apply them back into my translational equation to find my tension but just i'm trying to point out that we can be clever about which simultaneous equations to set up so that they can be a bit quicker to solve in a way whereas we saw in method 1 if i'm taking moments about g फिर देखिए इस इक्वेशन में टी और ए जी आ रहा है इसमें टी और अल्फा आ रहा है और आखिरी में ए जी और अल्फा आ रहा है मतलब वो परम्यूटेशन जो कॉम्बिनेशन है सॉरी ऑफ द अननोन वो तीनों में अलग हैं तो फिर पहले मुझे इससे इसमें इनपुट करना है फिर इससे इसमें इनपुट करना है सो ऑन इट इज बिकम्स अ लिटिल बिट मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड देन दिस मेथड टू राइट हियर वेर इफ आई क्लेव इफ आई वॉज अ बिट क्लेवर अबाउट वेयर आई टेक मोमेंट्स अबाउट आई टेक मोमेंट्स जस्ट अबाउट ए देन आई वुड हैव ऑलरेडी गॉट एन इक्वेजन जो मेरे लिए हेल्पफुल हो जाती टू डायरेक्टली सॉल्व टू साइमल्टेनियस इक्वेशंस, ओके एंड देन दीज टू वंस वी फाइंड देम वी कैन यूज टू फाइंड द टेंशन परफेक्ट ओके सो दिस क्वेश्चन वाज अ बिट इजियर बिकॉज हमें वो एजम्पन ऑलरेडी गिवन थी कि देर इज नो स्लिप हियर but now let's practice a problem where we don't know and we actually have to figure that out <clears throat> and this is going to be the last example that we do so let's uh, all put all our efforts into it right <clears throat> so something so familiar now the rolling problem we've seen it so many times but this time around we are in a position to actually determine ourselves whether there will be slip or no slip okay so let's do this so we have a 50 kg wheel which has a radius of gyration of this one uh, and we want to find the acceleration of the center of mass if there is a moment of 350 newton meter being applied to it or mu s be given and mu k be given and note this is something like a condition that might be the case for a car right वो देर इज श्योर फॉटन के उसके ऊपर एक पूरा मैस है जिस एज्यूम के वो उसी व्हील को ही रोटेट करवा रहे हैं बट नाउ यूजिंग आर किनेमेटिक्स एंड काइनेटिक्स वी आर एक्चुअली एबल टू कैलकुलेट के गिवन दीज सॉर्ट ऑफ गिवन दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ अप्लाइड मोमेंट व्हाट वुड बी द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ दिस व्हील ऑफ इट सेंटर ऑफ मैथ so ab let's try to solve this problem first of all main pehle bar 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 bhul jati hu aage to main pehle hi na iska ig nikal leti hu so what is that theek hai ji next then <clears throat> of course let's draw our body diagram what 
or do we know? It's going to have its weight. It's going to have a normal reaction force. It's going to have a frict. Oh, okay, I'll come to the direct. Sorry, it's going to just ignore this for a second. And there's the moment M like so of 350 Newton meter. Now let's come to, I think Kebaki, all I've got the applied moment, I've got the weight, I've got the normal force. The only thing that's left is friction. All right. Now, friction ki direction ke upar zara hum sab ko gawar karna hai ki if it were to exist, what direction would the friction be in? Anybody with any suggestions? Ma'am, right words? Right words. Abdullah, you're right. Very good. But um, could you give me an explanation for why it is to the right? I struggle uh, with this. Ma'am, it's rotating, ma'am. So it's uh, clockwise. So it's going leftward force lagayega at the point of contact. So, I am going to oppose the right verdict post. That's also how I think about it. Exactly right. Okay, if you look at this thing right at this point of contact, when it starts to, let's assume that it slips, when it is guaranteed that it is friction, then it is in this direction mein uska relative motion. Ho hai. Right? So, if it's slipping, the relative motion between these two guys for the wheel at right here is in this direction. It's slipping like this, right? So that means that the friction must be acting to the right to oppose this relative motion between the two. Think, think about it with, if you use your hand like a wheel and slide it on your palm, slide ke apne palm ke upar, to wo sliding motion that we know that the relative motion in both directions is in which direction. Mein ho hai. It's the if it's moving this way, then the relative motion is in that direction, and that's why friction is here. So friction is acting to the right. Exactly right. Thank you, uh, uh, Abdullah. So we've got our free body diagram. Now, uh, uh, as always, let's get our kinetic diagram in place. So for the kinetic diagram, we have just the horizontal acceleration of the center of mass, MAG, or also we can see ke, uh, the reason why I've drawn it to the right is because the applied moment it's going to roll to the right. So it's going to have an acceleration like this. And also then that tells me already that IG alpha must also be in this direction. So that right ki taraf, uh, rolling. Ho rahi ho. Now, uh, I forgot to draw my XY my axes so x y z so already i know okay, i've drawn alpha in the negative direction but it is what it is i'm trying to be consistent with the physical directions right now okay now let me write down all of our equations of motion equations of motion i hope i managed to fit in here so there are three of those we know so there is Summation fx is going to be equal to magx. Now from this one, what do I get? <clears throat> x direction key forces, which I've actually only got the one. I've just got friction. So all I have then is that the frictional force, oops, is equals to M A G X bus. That's it. I think so. Yep. Or could be nahi. Then the second one, second equation I have summation F Y is equals to M A G Y, which we have seen is actually just zero. So that tells me my second equation is 
just the normal forces in the y direction. So it's n minus mg. Yeah, here in other words, n is equals to mg. Yeah, the second equation. Now we come to our third equation, pe, which is summation mg is equals to ig alpha. So mg kya hai? Moments about g. Guys, help me out here. So there is only one force which is causing a turning effect, and that's just friction, because both mg and n are passing through the center of mass. <coughs> so ye f ka kya ho gaya? F multiplied by 0.4. Exactly right. Thank you, Tala. So F times 0.4. 0 0.4 F anti-clockwise hoga minus this moment of 350 Newton meter is going to be equal to IG 24.5 alpha. Lekin, oh, please be careful. Ig alpha negative. Hai. It's clockwise. So this should be a minus right here. Thick. Because I have left hand side anti-clockwise positive. Mein shuru kar diya tha. I'm sorry for that. It would have been simpler if I had written it out all it's clockwise positive. But anyway, okay. So we have our three equations and as we have noticed ke we actually have more unknowns here. So we have nah, wala to ek equation se ek solve ho gai. Lekin phir bhi, then we are still left with one, two, three unknowns and just these two equations. So we need those cases that we have discussed. We need that assumption of pele, let's assume no slip. And if I assume no slip, then what do I get? Someone, what is the equation? Mil jati hai? Does anyone recall if A is not slipping, that is, it is acting as the center of rotation, then G ki acceleration is not slipping. I'm zero. No, G ki acceleration. Exactly right. A G would become alpha R. This we had done in kinematics long ago when we were looking at rolling motion without any slip. And we have analyzed that G ki ki acceleration and A ki ki acceleration. And we have noticed that A G ki acceleration is alpha R to the right. Whereas A ki acceleration hoti upwards omega squared r. So I'm to G ki acceleration may interested in because wo appear karta hai in our equations of motion. So that's why I just need this A G is equals to alpha r. Or is se per meri zindagi thodi asan honi shuru ho gai hai. So for example, I already then know that F is equals to M. F is equals to M alpha r ho gaya hai. Or if m alpha r is equal to then my second equation becomes 0 0.4 times m alpha into r. What was 0.4? Hai, wo bhi. Minus 350 is equal to minus 24.5 alpha. So if we solve this now, because now my have the equation. Aa hai. So alpha turns out to be... <coughs> Guys, what does alpha turn out to be? 10.7. 10.8, exactly right. Radians per second squared. So, we have our acceleration. Okay, uh, acceleration of the mass center. Nikalna, so, this is just alpha. But isi se phir we know what Ag is. Ag is just alpha r. So, it's 10.8 multiplied by 0 0.4 which is 4.31 meters per second squared. But remember, for this, we actually do need to check our assumption. So friction kya aarai hai humare paas actually? Wo hume dekhna padega. So M alpha R becomes what? 
क्या आ रही है जी फ्रिक्शन टू हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स है अलाउेबल है या नहीं मैं वो म्यू एन से चेक होगा ना म्यू एन से एग्जैक्टली exactly राइट right. लेकिन म्यू कौन सा जब स्लिप नहीं हो रही तो वो म्यू एस होगा फिर म्यू एस होगा बिल्कुल ठीक और वही हमारी मैक्सिमम फ्रिक्शन का केस है म्यू एस टाइम्स एन इससे ज्यादा फ्रिक्शन हो ही नहीं सकती सो लेट्स सी के व्हाट इज हैपनिंग हियर म्यू एस टाइम्स एन जब करें दैट टर्न्स आउट टू बी व्हाट मैं 147 147 ओके okay, सो और इधर क्लियर हो गया है कि वी हैव अ मैसिव प्रॉब्लम Which is के हमारे हमने जो एक्सेलरेशन निकाली है अपनी नो स्लिप अज्यूम करके तो नो स्लिप इज ओनली द केस वेन द फ्रिक्शन वुड बी टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटीन न्यूटन और दैट इज क्लियरली मच लार्जर दैट इज ग्रेटर देन एफ एस मतलब ये कि वो अलाउेबल ही नहीं है सो आर अजम्पन इज रॉन्ग नो स्लिप अजम्पन इज रॉन्ग which means ke okay now it's clear to us ke this case no slip wala is not applicable here aur ye jo humne acceleration nikali thi 4.31 that is not possible instead kya ho raha hoga there will be slip there will be skidding aur ab aate hain phir ke skidding ko calculate karna padega hame और अब देखते हैं कि जब स्किड होएगा तो फिर व्हाट एक्सेलरेशन डू वी गेट एंड कुड एनीवन जस्ट अंदाजे से ही जस्ट इंटुएटिवली टेल मी दैट विल वी गेट अ स्मॉलर एक्सेलरेशन और अ लार्जर वन व्हाट डू यू थिंक व्हेन योर कार इज स्किडिंग तब आर वी गेटिंग अ स्मॉलर एक्सेलरेशन और अ लार्जर वन एज कंपेयर टू नो स्किड स्मॉलर स्मॉलर एंगुलर तो लार्ज हो ओ अभी देखते हैं जला इट विल बी स्मॉलर इन माय ओपिनियन एज वेल बिकॉज देयर इज जस्ट फ्रिक्शन ही कुछ और अभी अभी देखते हैं चलें सो इफ देयर इज स्लिपिंग देन द नाइस थिंग इज कि हमें पता है कि फ्रिक्शन मस्ट बी इक्वल टू जस्ट म्यू के टाइम्स एन सो देन वी कैन डायरेक्टली फाइंड व्हाट द फ्रिक्शन टर्न्स आउट टू बी दैट वुड बी 0.25 इनटू um 0.25 mg and then substituting that in our third equation that becomes then 0.4 times 0.25 mg minus 350 is equals to minus 24.5 alpha ah uh, why am i chale pehle main nikal leti hu alpha although mujhe abhi yaad hai ki mujhe alpha nikalne ki to zarurat hi nahi hai mere paas directly agx wali equation aa gayi hai ye lekin let's just carry on doing that so alpha turns out to be mm 9.28 aayega minus 9.28 aisa to nahi hona chahiye ab to kuch aur aa raha hai tala I am getting an alpha of uh, 12.3. Yes, ma'am. 12.3. Okay, 12.3 radian per second square. Or this one equation is directly. And I'm sorry, as I said, I forgot to just see that 0.2 f. Ki hamare pas equation hai in terms of ag x. So what I get is 0.25 mg must be equal to m ag x. so that tells us ke agx is equal to 0.25 times 9.81 which is just 2.45 meter per second square and i hope we all 
اتنا تو ہم سب کو یاد ہے ابھی پچھلے کیس ون میں when there was no slipping my pass uh, the acceleration was turning out to be 4. Point something meter per second square but that as we seen was the wrong assumption wo oh, itni high acceleration pe hum pahunch hi nahi sakte because there just enough there just isn't enough friction to cause that acceleration but instead there is slipping uh, such that the acceleration is just arising because of kinetic friction and it's equal to this 2.45 meter per second squared see guys so we if we if we were even further interested um hum explicitly uski frictional force or normal reaction force ko bhi likh sakte the uh, but we were just interested in the acceleration and that's why we were making notes of these things even though this is also interesting ke the uh, angular acceleration ko kya hota hai in the case of no slipping and in the case of slipping isko bhi you guys I, i don't think i should i shouldn't spoon feed you with everything but do think about the problem physically when there's a car wheel which is skidding is it rotating faster uh, as opposed to when it is not skidding Okay, just think about these things and then compare these abhi hum dekh lete hain so when there is no slip <coughs> when we were assuming no slip we were getting this angular acceleration and this uh, horizontal acceleration for the center of mass however we saw that this was actually not possible therefore there was slip and when we reanalyze the problem with slip and we end up getting that the angular acceleration is larger whereas the actual absolute acceleration of the center of mass is lower and physically as well intuitively i hope that makes sense because that's exactly what we observe that when the car wheel is skidding it starts to rotate at a higher angular velocity angular velocity your yeah, acceleration in this case is larger whereas the center of mass ki movement forwards is at lower acceleration right guys so this was the last example for the course for kinetics of the rigid body we are our course we are just ending for the equations of motion uh, of course there is the work in energy principle and the principle of impulse and momentum which are applicable for the rigid body uh but we we don't have enough time to go over them in this course but on top of that we have actually seen the procedure of how that works out okay so that's uh, inshallah that is something that you guys will be able to do whenever the need arises just by reading up on it yourself researching and on it yourself and then the problem solving yourselves um also as i said to you guys this course is in a series of uh courses uh where it's first we looked at statics then dynamics and then either i think it's not actually next semester but the semester after that um that you will be looking at the mechanics of machines and the mechanics of machines is all to do with dynamics of machines and you will be looking at this in great depth even more Uh, even more depth in that course right there theek hai ji so congrats to all of you um a bit anticlimactic but it always is the end of some things so uh, thank you all very very much i forgot to ask if there were any questions remaining from this lecture today okay no everybody is just too excited partying okay. already ke khatam ho gaya course ke koi sawal nahi puchna hame please uh right so thank you so much all of you for being just excellent people excellent uh, audience or uh, i learned so much during this course i hope ke aap logon ko bhi there's been something at least even just a small tiny part if there's been uh, an increase in your knowledge then uh, that's uh, time well spent basically so uh, good luck for your labs the ones which are coming up next week and then after that relax a little bit no doubt i think we all you guys need a break i need a break we all need to take some break but then come up with a nice little plan for revision taaki 
you don't want to just forget all of this right so practice for your exams practice with the intent of learning um and inshallah your exams will be smooth sailing theek hai ji so good luck for that uh, be in touch with talha while you're revising taaki what uh, talha will do is he let me know uh, during the holidays ya phir jo aap logon ka semester break aa raha hai ke agar hame koi revision class arrange karne ki zarurat hogi so then we'll do that theek hai if you accumulate a lot of problems um but otherwise thank you so much thanks uh, to all of you as an bilkul end of an era that uh, we had you showing up to classes so uh thank you to all of you um agar kisi ko koi attendance issues hoye i i'll upload the attendances just this week so just drop me a message or uh, i'll i'll deal with that so uh inshallah see you guys around uh, and inshallah see you for the revision lecture if you need one